So we're back for the second day of SIV and we've got, I think, the most of the first day jitters out of the way. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> and uh, today for me, I'm going to be working on collapses into auto rotation and then spins, which uh, should be pretty spicy. I was at this point just feeling pretty disappointed that I felt so nauseous. So I was hoping to not have a nauseous day, yeah. but also do a little bit more. And I think that first fear of the first day had gone. The second day is usually when you start getting into good stuff. So we know where we're going now. We know the takeoff, we know the procedure. So it's just a case of putting all the equipment together, clipping in, forward launching into the morning mist, which is always really nice and straight into the box. Full collapse, do nothing for a second. So you got a little rock back there. And now it's turning you away, so lean right into the collapse. Make sure you've got no brake on the outside. So lean all the way in, try and turn back on your original heading. Oh dear. For that reason, to get into an auto rotation is quite difficult for my glider, so I need to do a little bit of a roll, then followed up by a big collapse input and weight shifting to the collapsed side, which is exactly what you shouldn't do. But with Trying to get to a point where we get a fully developed spiral, as if you had a cravat or a big collapse, and to see if we can be able to control it and pull out. Yeah, let it build, let it build, look around, exit. A lot of the difficult things to get in are just to get to a point where we then can make things worse before we can make them better. So good job, that's what auto rotation feels like. We didn't go into a full on fat like auto rotation. So. It loses a lot of height in these things, so uh, the runs end up being quite short. So straight into some spirals with rapid exits. The timing was always wrong on it, so that was the thing that I was working on today. Okay, good. Was also trying to concentrate on looking around a little bit more. Every time I did one, I looked in a different place, so I wasn't just looking at the wingtip, I was looking to the opposite side, to the sky, to the horizon, and this was to try and stop myself from feeling sick, which worked really well. Much better, head towards the landing, please. So another thing that he had kind of debriefed us on in the classroom was um, trusting the harness more and trying not to let my legs and my arms go flailing all over the place. So good job, you were a little bit late that time, but then you just left the compensation break on and you managed to bring it back around. You can even see me there leaning back, trying to lean back into the harness. So. You, know, you know the little, um, on our retreats, yeah. how we can see people progress and being afraid of the sand and the first day and then you know on the second day they're going to be better. And then they start working on dissociating their brakes and stuff. Yeah. This is exactly the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Also, it's weird how on the first day I wanted to ask him loads of questions and I was thinking, oh, I don't think I don't I'm, know enough. I, I don't know enough. I don't think I'm, it's been explained right but it's just doing, you just need to do it. You yeah. just need to follow instruction and then it comes more. Show me a nice auto rotation. I'm just gonna tell you when to exit. Second one was similar to the first one, but now that we knew the characteristics was about aggravating the uh, auto rotation as much as possible to get out. Uh, but these do consume a lot of height, so uh, I didn't manage to do that many. And then towards the end, uh, we uh, managed to do once what you're actually supposed to do with it in the wild, which, if you have a cravat or a big collapse, that turns you onto the side of the collapse, trying to weight shift and pull brake on the other side to correct your course and keep flying straight, but not so much that you fly out the other side, or even if you pull too much, you might end up stalling the, the flying side. So very similar to what we do on our ground handling as well. Let's pull a nice collapse and see what happens. My second run, I started where you were on your first run, just by doing some collapsing to the right side, just to see how my wing reacted and how I reacted to it, what I needed to do in terms of weight shift and brake input in order to continue flying straight. This was all so that I could go into a right auto rotation. So you went off your course much less. Pump that out, head towards the landing, please. I was actually surprised that these auto rotations didn't feel as violent as I'd expected them to. Compared to the spiral, it felt a lot slower. You're still in the rotation, you're still in, you're still in. There's the exit window. I think this exercise was good for me in general anyway because I'm always worried that if I get a collapse my wing would react really badly but now I know that it's just a pretty stable wing and it's actually quite easy to control when there's a collapse. Where there's a lot of drag, we don't want to react too soon. Yeah. 
So you want to collapse, but when you see it go from here... So after a bit of a brief, I moved on to cravat clearing and spins, which is actually quite fun. Not as crazy and it gives you a lot of feeling, so it's quite nice. I really enjoyed it. And the thing you're looking for is really that wingtip flicking under. So this is how aggressive we need to be when we have a cravat. We can't just eh, do it gently. We've got to blast that cravat out. and it's the, it's the split second that you actually hold it down rather than punching that's going to be effective. So because they don't waste a lot of height, you can get quite a lot of those in. Uh, and then at the end there, he just threw a surprise uh, cravat to auto rotation and also some frontals, but they were pretty uneventful. My final run of the day was uh, a lot more of the same, trying those auto rotations, mainly to the right, because that's my strong side. But uh, I was really struggling to keep it held in. I think I did one really good one where I managed to hold the collapse in and do an auto rotation. Uh, but then we moved on to some frontal collapses. And again, that was quite uneventful, but still a good exercise for me because I'm always worried about that. Now it's in front. Good. This is, uh, oh, is someone landing here? That works. So, uh, two poles, one lather, and about 10 people later, we got it done. Nice. This is the biggest killer in the sport. It takes people, it takes people to the ground for no reason, but you can kind of see why. If you've never done any training, you've never even done a spiral, and you've only ever had the wings sat above your head, and then you're close to the ground, and two seconds later, you're in that situation, and you've just been like, oh yeah, put your hands up, your safe wing will take care of you. Uh, you can see why people don't do anything, and by the time they think, shit, I should probably try something, they're either paralysed by fear, or they actually just don't know what they have to do. So this one's nice, there, you just drop in, and bang, you get on the brake, 90 degrees later, hand goes right up, you get a tiny little roll out, and then jink, you just come back on with a bit of pressure, and you're straight. Textbook, that is, well done. Right, so this, your wing is very cravatty, which you'll find out tomorrow. So we are gonna have a chance to put this into practice. So you have to remember, stop the rotation, get a new heading if you need it, check out what kind of cravat it is, and then and only then do we clear it. And uh, it's a punch and a hold. But don't really try to pump them out while you're still in a rotation or in a dynamic situation. Get it under control and then use this method. And it might only be that you're holding it for a fraction of a second, but that's all the difference. How was today? I enjoyed this more. See this whole time here, there's roll, there's roll, there's roll, there's roll. So you, by doing little adjustments on the outside brake, you can cancel the roll mm. with good timing. So every time it rolls towards the collapse, you pull some brake. Every time it rolls away, you put your hand up. So this was kind of like, oh yeah, no, you, you started to brake here, <coughs> but then you release it there. Yeah. and you're not near the exit window, so then it just carries on turning and then you pull harder and you come out. Yeah, you see that little roll? Yeah. That means you're out. Oh. Bing! So you see about 50% of your cord, boom, is gone. Um, but it jumps back to life nice and quickly. But you have to wait until this point, until it's past the, the vertical. Yeah. Okay? Even like here, if you catch it, it can quite happily go to parachutal, where it's in front of pulling you, and you can get on it. Good, quite happy with myself. Um, I does, think does it, the is auto it, is rotations it, that I did get in, they didn't feel as dramatic as spins. Spirals. Spirals. <whistles> Spirals, not spins, yeah. From the first collapse to auto rotation to the last collapse to auto rotation. Can go. I got a really good one that I was really pleased about on my first run today, going right. Then he asked me to go left, and I were too early and and stuff. Yeah. And then when I went back right again, I did it wrong again because I was focusing on the thing that I'd done wrong. I think. Yeah. yeah. So how did your flights go then? It was all right. I don't really remember the first ones anymore. But the on the last one, I tried spin appreciation and spins or just starting to spin and then release and it was good it's not super dramatic it's kind of easy-ish to feel 
uh, and because when you spin it kind of goes forward anyway then your catch is really fast like a, a little catch and release straight away are you looking forward to back flying potentially and stalling i think part of me is not looking for it because I'm scared because it's the big S, mm. the big stool. Yeah. But other part of me is like that's exactly what you want. It took, missed out on last time, and you really wanted me to do four years to be able. Obviously, COVID, and that, but it took me four years to go from the first SIV to the second SIV. So it's a, it feels to me like a huge missed opportunity if I don't try it. Mm -hmm. so.